say yes I, 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 I need you to do more and say less I, 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 I won't just say yes I, 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 I need you to do more and say less I thought you knew that anybody can do that The trailer for Good Times just came on have you seen the trailer for the new cartoon no <laughs> what's wrong right. so, so I'm, I'm gonna give you a, just a little bit so i want you i'm gonna send this over to you so you can play a little bit of it all right and all right. I'm, I'm struggling with this because there's some people in it that i really like you know uh-huh. friends of mine and so i'm always gonna tell the truth but i'm gonna tell you that i really 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 like yvette nicole brown as a human being I yeah. also realize people, you know, this is their oh. job. So it's like, I'm not trying to come on your job and tell you, tell people not to go see your stuff. Yeah, you got to pay rent. However, <laughs> I feel this way, the way I felt about the PJs, right? And for I was going to ask you about that in reference to I was going to ask yeah, you. Yeah, I'm consistent. I think I might even, re- re- I probably even wrote a column about the PJs because it's, it's not about respectability. It's about, there's been so much work put into codifying the image of black people as something devalu- less than violent, ignorant, you know, birth of a nation, what D.W. Griffith did, and then the president at the time of the United States screening that is, and they are, they're calling it one of the best, the best films of all time, right. where it was just image after image after image of blackness black people in congress with the shoes off eating fried chicken with chicken bones and the black man trying to rape the white woman and then the clan comes to save her virtue we're still experiencing the fallout from a movie a film that was then that gave rise and birth to the clan that that kind of gave license to the the destruction of black life that you don't like about this that you saw all right i'm gonna play a little bit of it all right let's do it play it smith I have important news. Let me guess. The state called and they want to cut you a disability check for your face. Hold up. You can get paid for that? There's a lot of gun violence. It's the okay. hood. It's, okay. you know. And uh, um, <laughs> all right, I'm just, I'm like, should we be laughing at this? I don't know. I, and I don't want to be that person. I promise you. Like, I, I, you know, I like a good time, Dr. Amin. Well, maybe I don't like pink You're cocaine. A You're a good you know. time. You're a good you know, time. I, I feel like I'm a good time. I'm not a pink cocaine, you know, <laughs> pinky in the booty type of good time. But, I, you know, I'm just saying, all right. But here's the but, thing. <laughs> I, I there, the, the whole, the thing about who's the dummy, me for not wearing a condom and then the, like the the N word, like we're bleeping it out. It's just like, come on. So yes, I'm with you on this. And truthfully, We all know that Good Times started to go downhill as a series itself, and that that was one of the impetuses for uh, John Amos leaving the show was that it became buffoonery. It became coonery. Let me me say he didn't leave. He was he was written out. He was written out and killed. They killed him. I actually I I lunched with John Amos and he told the story and he's told the story many places, but I actually got it from mouth to ear. Like I got it from his mouth that he went to leave. (laughs) Yeah, no, that he went to Norman Lear and was like, um, this JJ, this is this is not, you know, the way black people, you know, we we all have folk that you know, we some of us have grown up in the in the projects. This is not this is not a a, an indictment on poverty or anything. But you know, at some point the buffoonery it's almost like Steve Urkel. Did I do that? You know, it's like, you know, we, we miss the, it's family matters. The but we're always. Yeah. Those characters elevating, are, yes, are rough. Interest. And then once they pulled that JJ character forward, it was injurious to us. So I know we're talking about wellness Wednesday and people are like, Oh, we're talking about this is wellness. This is wellness. It's absolutely wellness. This has to do with how we see ourselves, how other people see us. And those shows that were produced did a lot to infect middle America's mind on what black people were, how we are. And then those same people have grown up to be police officers. Those same people are in positions of power and they think that this is black people. Like these are us and we've been bamboozled, hoodwinked. 
Yes, Let's. run them up, let us trade, run them. And, and it's exacerbated by the willful um, segregation that goes on. Like 70% of white folk, I think it's 75%, three-fourths of all white white folk in this country, and this is an NBC poll yeah. put out in 2014, but I know the numbers haven't changed, and it's probably worse now. Um, self-segregate, which means you have no relationship with anybody outside of your culture. So your your lens of who we are is filtered through media, through music, right? And if this is a depiction, then when you see black people uh, or young black man in the elevator, you're clutching your pocketbook or you're, you're, you're slamming on your lock when you see bl- three black boys walking across the street because they're all violent. And if they're wearing hoodies, you know, like a Trayvon Martin, then they're not worthy of life, you know, or, you know, so I just, I, I feel like I don't want to participate in furthering images that are already designed to imitate till us at any point in time, you know, Absolutely. because. And that's what this that, so we're on the same page. This kind okay. of stuff uh, does that to us. It dehumanizes us. It also allows people to not feel any empathy or humanity. Uh, we are not people. We're just animals and we get whatever we get. Which is why it was it was important for me to have Dr. Chris, Christina Peronza Coles on because she does an amazing series on Twitter. Um, just about every day she's posting like today is Dr. Matilda Evans who performed surgery in an operating room of a hospital that she founded in South Carolina in 1901. And then we talked about the first uh, pharmacist, you know, um, and Dr. Hughes, Ju- Julia Hughes and Anna James uh, Rosella. And we're, you know, uh, we're celebrating these names that you will not hear ordinarily with these incredible stories that should all be on the big screen somewhere because Absolutely. what does that look like to start a hospital in 1901? What's her story? You know what I mean? Like, I want to know that. Can we make I a little cartoon? Yeah, that's that's not going to get told on a big screen for the most part. Why not though? Why not? Oh, Don't why? We... The other images are pandering to people's lowest proclivities. And that includes titillating us as a people to those lowest lows instead of the higher highs. It, you know, it rocks us to sleep and it helps feed the other stereotypes. So it works in all the capacities. It hits all the buttons. I don't think it's like inherently nefarious. I think foundationally is nefarious, but I think the people who are in those spaces, do you, you think they're the thinking, actors? huh? You mean the actors? No, no. The people who green light, whether we're talking oh. about music, because I've been, you know, I've been having a lot of conversations about music. We had Kevin Powell and and Sophia Chang on on Monday, and woo we, you know, are they sitting in their on their perches saying, "I'm going to green light this because it makes black people look the way I think black people are." Do they even do? Are they even conscious? Like immediately I saw the trailer and I was like, this is problematic. Nobody in the room was like, hey, hey, no. hey, this it, is so, <laughs> wait, so wait a minute. The first, so the answer to the first question is yes, it's deliberate. The second answer is okay. that they forgot to call 1-800-ASK-A-NEGRO and then they didn't get any opinion on how this should really operate. Just like you, I have lots of friends in entertainment and lots of them are screenwriters. A uh, very good friend of mine, Adisa Iwa, he's the head of, he started the um, at Morehouse, the, the film and television program there. He's a dean down there. And he was a screenwriter for years, decades in LA. And that's how we met actually. And he told me if, if the hair raising stories of being in the writer's rooms of the things that people did and suggested that characters do is so disheartening and funny and laughing stock that it would flabber. It would, you could imagine it, imagine the worst thing. And then there it is much like this trailer. And people think that that was just fine. So, you know, but professor under, have you seen that film uh, dancing in September? No, it's great. It's great. It's along the lines of of the new one that they have that is Jeffrey Wright. Um, American fiction. Yes. But this came out like uh, maybe 10 years or more. OK. All right. That's oh, you got Isaiah Washington. Mm-hmm. <laughs> OK, hold on. Chai McBride, James Avery, Uncle Phil's in it. Uh, Nicole Ari Parker. Yeah. OK. It's well, a great film. That this? film was done, was written by. Uh, one of my, uh, Dean Adisa, uh, he was, uh, 
very good friend who was an actual writer in those rooms. And this is that experience. And it's just so good. Like, it's really, really good. So dancing. Okay. Is- Reggie, Reggie Rock by the wood, by the wood uh, is the director. Yes. All right. And you know, you, Mary is- to Gina by the wood. Yes. By the, Gina Prince by the wood, yes. by the wood. Um, okay. Thank you for giving me something else to look at. Cause I was, before I was, uh, coming in today, I was watching, um, young Sheldon and, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've caught up on that series. I haven't All caught right. up on it. All right. I'll talk more about it tomorrow, but you know, I was just remarking on how, you know, Chuck, what's his name? Lori was able to, you know, he puts out so much, but with this particular series, it follows a young genius, a little kid named Sheldon, who is a genius and he's in a working class family. And, and I would say low, low income, fa- low middle class family. And they are, you know, he's a twin. So his sister is not a genius, but she is in her own way. Right. And, um, and it's based off of Sheldon from big bang theory. So like it goes, which I never watched. So I'm not (laughs) big bang boo, but this one is, is so it's refreshing because each episode, you know, there's kind of like this moral lesson and, you know, we're walking through this, you know, petulant little kid who is smarter than everybody, including his parents. what, uh, What network is it on? Well, I'm catching it on Netflix. I'm catching okay. up. And I think the final, the last season, I think they're up to season seven. I think you can get it on Peacock. I'm not caught up yet. I'm like in season three or four. Gotcha. But I'm just, I'm, you know, it's it's just wholesome in a way. And while, while, while I was watching it, I was thinking, um, without it being black or white, we could have a series like this. And it's seven seasons in. Like, so it's successful, That's right? Impressive. So. That's impressive because a lot of actors don't get to follow that trajectory or right. show winners. And so I love what you said at the top about we don't want to blame the actors for having to take roles like this, whether it's voice acting or on screen, on camera, on stage. It's just really, really challenging. Yes. Um, what I will say, you know, my mother's a Shakespearean trained actress and NYU grad and taught it, taught there and at Carnegie Mellon, all the other places. And I would just tell you that lots of her classmates and people she taught also were these amazing actors. Calvin Lockhart was one of her classmates. And this brother was in these, in a lot of these black exploitation movies, fine as wine too, fine as frog hair, sorry. But, <laughs> but the, the idea that a lot of these folks were in these movies that were on Shakespearean stages, right? Like that were very, very highly trained thespians. And yet this is what Hollywood had to offer them. So it's just this real dichotomy of what's available versus do you want to work in your field? And, and that's, it's a, it's real conundrum. It is. Someone said, I guess Steph Curry is a Negro enough because he's one of the producers. I don't think this is an indictment on individuals any, any more so than I've talked about LeBron James producing the Madam C.J. Walker uh, miniseries, which was horrific. It was horrific and historically inaccurate and a whole host of other things. We can like a person and still hold them accountable. And I think there's there has to be there has to be in our community this space that this is not criticism for the sake of criticism this is saying can we do better should we do better and before we put something into the zeitgeist that represents us that has our melanin on it should there not be a standard or a film a a a a can call one eight hundred asking negro like anyone somebody's calling right now i don't want to even tell them to put that number out there because i will answer actually because all right Five five five. No, five five five. Ask a Negro. There ask we go. Negro. I... <laughs> so, what, so what I'll say to that is sometimes we have to call too, and we need to put each other, bring each other to the mat, and say, okay, this is. Hold on, like we need a review board of our own to say, hold, hold on, hold on a second. This can be problematic, or this is right. a problem. Let's see how we can work this out. And I, I think what happens is even though we may be producing or executive producing because that's more than likely what somebody so just bringing money to the table. Right. Um, they're not necessarily the writers of this thing. Right. Or so, even maybe the ultimate green lighters. Right. Because right. when I asked if it's, if it's willful, I don't think it's willful. I think it's like people sat in a room and they laughed and they were like, yes. All right. Go do this because racism is so baked into the soil. We all walk around and carry these anti-black images well, and feelings. It, it may not be deliberate for him. 
for somebody right. like Steph Curry. Cause I think he's a genuine guy and he does yes. work so in the I community. Like him. I love his wife, not just cause she's Jamaican. Hey, but I, I, yes, right. <laughs> we're out I here. <laughs> oh, we're gonna sneak up on you. And then you hear, bop, 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 and then you know. <laughs> so here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, nice. And so here's the thing. Um, I don't think it's willful on his part, but I'm saying a lot of the people in the writers' rooms and a lot of people who are at the executive uh levels who green light stuff or who are guiding the writers' rooms, you can believe a lot of it is just. It's a little hateful. Sorry. And we get, you know, people get to talk about us like that and portray us that way. But you don't see every group or ethnicity portrayed just any willy nilly way. You will have a line outside that studio. People will be picketing. It will be a problem. So right. if we don't create uh, an environment where it will be a problem for people and we're interrupting their dollars, that's the only way that you yes. can touch them, then can't complain. Well, uh, Ice Curry is starring in the Lindsay Lohan Irish Wish that I was just talking about on Monday. So there's that. And her mom is uh, Chinese Jamaican and her dad is Jamaican, 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 Jamaican. Is there a, I don't think there's a distinction. <laughs> I don't know. All right. <laughs> Yeah.